Hey, what's going on guys, Hex here, and today we're taking a look at the Marvel Legends X-Men Wave 1 Rogue, which is part of the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure. Uh, she comes with one of Juggernaut's legs. She also comes with uh, just a hand uh, that does not have her gloves on, so that way I guess she can touch people and stuff like that and uh, gain their powers. But uh, this again, being one of those Jim Lee designs from the 90s X-Men cartoon, uh, this is one of my favorite female characters. And uh, whenever I saw this thing, I think first announced at San Diego Comic-Con uh, last year, I was like, that that is definitely a character that I'm picking up. Like, I don't even need to see uh, the rest of what they're doing with X-Men. If they look anything like this, then, uh, you know, I'm probably going to pick them all up. Uh, I love this character, the way she looks. It's like she stepped out of that comic book and also that cartoon. Just uh, To me, this is a perfect representation of Rogue, and she looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, she stands well. Uh, wish she had a flight stand. Uh, there's a little bit of, you can see that they didn't fully paint the uh, metallic green right there uh, to where the uh, you know the leg comes together with the thigh. But uh, still, overall, that's the only thing that I can see that's really a flaw with my particular figure. That's probably not the case. You know, going to be the same thing on yours. Uh, you might have something different. But uh, all the lines uh, seem to be very good where the green meets the yellow. Um, and here in the front as well, everything looks nice and clean. Uh, the jacket is actually a separate portion. So you have the uh, the jacket portion that goes um, on the uh, the chest or in the back of the figure. It's just glued to the back. Uh, so it is a separate piece, but it's glued on there. And then you have the sleeves, which are separate from the jacket. That way she can still have all that articulation that she needs. I mean, that's pretty common that we've seen in, I, I think, uh, some other Marvel Legends. And also we see it in the Star Wars 6-inch Black Line series uh, that they're doing that. But uh, they're just scrunched up here in the bicep. And you can see that you can still get that nice metallic paint there. Uh, now with these little yellow sections, you can see that they are actually separate uh, from uh, the glove there. So whenever you do... Uh, take this hand off or this fist off these will fall off so just make sure you don't lose that uh, you also have you know which is separate uh, the belt here I like it uh, that just like you saw in you know all the comics from uh, basically 90s Jim Lee uh, that she kind of has it off to the side here it's very kind of loose on her because she's got a really thin waist but uh, I like that design uh, you also have some loose pieces down here that you can see there's a green separate piece down here that's metallic green and then this piece that's yellow uh, which is just kind of supposed to represent the top por uh, top portion of the boot there so this is just you know basically a knee high boot uh, but that way you can bend the knee and uh, you can still kind of have that look so I, I like that decision to go that route um, I think it looks good so just whenever you stand her straight up you just gotta you know adjust them make sure that they're in the front and it looks right uh, but starting off with the the head sculpt, you know this is Hasbro that's doing these. Uh, the same people that are making the Star Wars six inch Black Line series faces, and uh, they obviously are not the same people or sculptors or whatever or the people that paint the eyes because this face is absolutely perfect. Uh, whenever you look at Kitty Pride's and also Phoenix, I mean they're absolutely perfect. And uh, you can see a little bit of like kind of blush or makeup uh, here on the cheek. So it's just just the right amount of kind of red just kind of barely on there. I don't know if it's showing well on camera, but it is there. Uh, the lips, they look good. Nothing's, you know, messed up or anything. The skin tone, I like that as well. Uh, then you have the eyes, which are uh, green to kind of match that of uh, kind of this metallic green in the costume. You see the eyebrows are a, a kind of a light brown to go with the uh, brown hair here. So um, this all looks good. I like the sculpt of the hair and it's kind of wavy. Uh, you can even see that the uh, bandana here is metallic green. This actually, you know, it's kind of soft rubbery plastic. So that will move. I, I think that this all looks good. It's not too much, not too little. So, uh, with the kind of white or kind of gray looking streak there. I believe it's supposed to be white, but uh, everything looks really good to, uh, you know, the logos on there, just the, the way the figure is designed. Uh, I like everything about it. You even see the red X here on the shoulders. Looks really nice. Again, this green is that metallic green. I think that's showing up pretty good on the camera. And um, I just like everything about this figure. I uh, wish it had a flight stand. You know, uh, but that's one of the things that, you know, I can just go by and uh, fix however I want to do. 
As far as uh, articulation, uh, you know, the head, it can go kind of side to side. Uh, you got a little bit of, you know, there's a ball joint there, so you can get a little bit uh, side like that. And then, you know, it obviously rotates. The only thing is the hair can't really go back with it because it rests right up against the back. So if you did have her in a flight mode, I guess you can kind of bend up here at the chest. Uh, the way she can kind of look forward, but you can't really bend that neck all the way, you know, to where it's looking up uh, and straight forward if you had her in a flight mode like that. But I'll just have her kind of standing like so. So uh, that's the only really negative gripe that I can find. But still, I love the hair, so I I'm willing to sacrifice that to have this look uh, that we got overall. Uh, as far as the uh, chest, kind of already showed that. So that's on a nice ball joint there. So that moves around however you need to. So that's actually also the waist as well. Uh, then you have the shoulders to where these can go in and out. They rotate here. And then you have the elbows that they will bend 90 or almost 90 degrees. They'll rotate. Uh, the wrist, they do rotate and they go left to right. This one over here goes left to right as well. Then you have the legs, which really good joints here. Uh, so you can get the legs however you need to, going out, uh, not really back any, but you can go forward, thigh cut, uh, then you have the knee bend, which is 90 degrees like I showed earlier, just got to adjust this however you need it, and then the feet, they go front and back, and they also go side to side. Uh, her having the, you know, the knee-high boots where they're flat down here, she's actually quite easy to stand, or stands a lot better than some of the the other uh, female characters, and I'll, I'll show you here with a couple of um, whatever comparisons. Let me just get her uh, knee bent there. All right, so there she is, and we'll talk further into this figure. Uh, Oh, there we go. We finally got her to stand. As far as comparisons, you can see the Phoenix is a little bit taller there. Uh, and then if we bring in the Build-A-Figure, again, she comes with one of the legs. You can see uh, Juggernaut and how much taller he is there. So, um, you know, we'll get more into Phoenix whenever we take a look at her review. But uh, she's very hard to stand. But fortunately, we got her to stand right there uh, just because I've fiddled with her for like five minutes before I started the video. But uh, anyways, that's a look at Rogue, uh, one of my favorite characters uh, from the X-Men, and I think she looks gorgeous. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoy, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.